Hello, I'm uh, Pete Warden, the uh, chairman of the Breakthrough Prize Foundation and the former director of NASA Ames Research Center. What I'd like to talk about today is the Breakthrough Initiatives uh, and uh, our efforts to really find out uh, the fundamental questions of uh, life in the universe. Uh, just an introduction that there are three fundamental questions. The first one is, uh, uh, is there life anywhere else? Is there life uh, in our solar system or in other solar systems? The second question, is there intelligent life anywhere? Uh, are there other intelligences nearby or in our galaxy or anywhere? The third question is uh, uh, perhaps the one to me which I find most exciting is the can we travel between the stars? Well, let me talk a little bit about our organization. Our organization is the Breakthrough Prize Foundation. Uh, a little bit of background about the Breakthrough Prize Foundation. In about 2009, uh, our principal sponsor and founding sponsor, uh, Yuri Milner, uh, who's a physicist by background, uh, began to look at lists of the, the most admired people on the planet, uh, whether they were politicians or sports heroes or entertainment heroes or uh, philanthropists or whatever. Uh, and he discovered that on these lists, uh, there's many of them online, you can find them, that there are few, if any, scientists who might have... Uh, uh, Stephen Hawking listed on a few, but uh, very few other scientists. Uh, Albert Einstein, of course. Uh, so one of his concerns was, uh, why is it that society doesn't admire scientists as much as it does sports heroes, for example, or entertainment heroes? Uh, he felt that uh, it's a responsibility of himself as a successful uh, entrepreneur, but also as a scientist, to, uh, to do something about it. And so he thought the idea was, Let's give the biggest prizes in science. Uh, so he founded the Breakthrough Prize in Fundamental Physics. It's a prize that uh, has $3 million. It's uh, three times larger than a, than a Swedish prize. I guess I should mention it, the Nobel Prize. Uh, but the idea was to reward science, but also to inspire people. Uh, in addition, uh, Mr. Milner persuaded other uh, high net worth uh, individuals, uh, mostly Silicon Valley uh, people, people uh, like Ann Witwiski, the founder of 23andMe, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, uh, and Sergey Brin, the co-founder of, of Google, uh, and a few others uh, to, to sponsor these prizes. We now have seven major prizes. Uh, there are five of them in life sciences. Uh, one in physics, the initial one, and, uh, and uh, for the last few years, a prize in mathematics. Now, in addition to giving these prizes, the idea is we would like to celebrate the, uh, the scientists that, that do this work. So we founded a uh, uh, ceremony the, in Silicon Valley. It's the only black tie ceremony in, in Silicon Valley. Uh, and it's been going on about six years. But this is how I got involved at the time I was the director of NASA's Ames Research Center, which is one of NASA's 10 centers, but the center right in the, in the center of, of Silicon Valley. Uh, and uh, in addition, to make this a really cool ceremony, uh, Yuri Milner asked Vanity Fair uh, to help him. Now, for those of you that don't know, Vanity Fair is the organization that puts on the post-Oscar party, which I am told, but since I've never been invited, uh, the uh, I don't know, is the coolest party in Hollywood. It's uh, held right after the Oscar ceremony. Uh, but uh, they were asked to assist in setting up the Breakthrough Prize ceremony in Silicon Valley. And they looked around Silicon Valley, and they thought the best place for this prize ceremony is the, the campus of NASA Ames Research Center. And one of the reasons they felt was because that there are some very old historic uh, hangars uh, that uh, were built in the 1930s for airships. Uh, in the 1930s, the United States and many other countries was building giant airships. Uh, so these, uh, these hangars are uh, over 300 meters long, uh, uh, you know, about 90 meters high. So they're a very, very uh, interesting hangar. Uh, so we decided that, uh, that we would help the Breakthrough Prize Ceremony, and NASA uh, worked with the Breakthrough Prize Ceremony 
Breakthrough Prize team, as well as the uh, uh, Vanity Fair to set up these, these uh, prize ceremony. And it's quite an impressive affair. Now, I got involved because as the, as the, as the landlord, I got invited, as you, you always invite landlords to, to special parties. Uh, but uh, this is quite an impressive ceremony. We, uh, we have, uh, for example, a uh, very noted Hollywood figure as our master of ceremonies. Uh, last year, for example, uh, uh, we did one better than the Nobel Prize, which has the King of Sweden present the uh, prizes. So we actually had God present our prizes. Uh, uh, Morgan Freeman, the actor, of course, uh, is uh, who we're talking about. So it was quite an impressive ceremony. Uh, the way these ceremonies work is uh, uh, there's usually a Hollywood figure that, uh, along with the Silicon Valley billionaire, uh, for example, I have a picture here that uh, uh, from a, a few years ago that... Uh, uh, has uh, Helen Hobbs, uh, a, a very famous uh, medical researcher who won one of the prizes, uh, along with Mark Zuckerberg. And unfortunately, I forget the name of the actress, but she's Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So, so it's a very impressive, uh, very impressive ceremony. Now, uh, we've done it. We do a couple other things uh, for the prize. And uh, one of those is the, uh, uh, the Breakthrough Junior Prize. Uh, this we started about three years ago. And this is something I really think is important uh, for young people. Uh, it's designed for high school students, uh, students I think between the ages of 13 and 18, uh, that produce a five-minute video uh, about some uh, big idea in science or mathematics. The winner uh, gets a $250,000 US dollar scholarship to go to any university they want to throughout the world. Uh, the, the school that, uh, that one goes to gets a laboratory uh, that's uh, worth uh, well over 100,000 US dollars. But maybe one of the most interesting things is the teacher that the student identifies that inspires them uh, gets a, a $50,000 check. Uh, now the uh, first year we did this, the student didn't tell the teacher that he'd been nominated. So when we called up to, to tell the teacher uh, that he won $50,000 and where to send the check. The teacher was somewhat suspicious. Uh, he asked, is, is this a call from uh, Nigeria or someplace that's trying to, to do a scam? So and now we finally convinced him that it, uh, it, was, a, it was a real deal. Uh, but this is, uh, this, uh, uh, the Junior Prize is announced uh, uh, usually in August uh, of each year. So I really encourage uh, people to, uh, if, you, if, you, if you are a young person or you know a young person, uh, to, to take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, last year, for example, we actually had two winners. Uh, one was a young lady, uh, Deanna C. from Singapore, who did a really lovely film uh, about biology. Uh, the other winner was uh, Antonella Massini uh, from Peru, uh, that she did a, a, a special film on the principles of, of fundamental physics. Uh, so this is a really cool opportunity, and, and I really hope that people will take advantage of it. What I'd like to turn now to is the questions, the three fundamental questions of life in the universe. And uh, to remind everybody, the, the, the first question is, uh, is there life any place outside the Earth? Is there life in our solar system? Uh, is, there, is there life uh, in other solar systems? The second question, uh, which is of, of fundamental interest, is if there is life, is any of it intelligent? Are there intelligent life forms elsewhere uh, nearby in our galaxy or maybe in, in uh, other parts of the galaxy. Uh, the third question is, is related to that is can we travel between the stars? Well, I'd like to give a little motivation of, of, of why we look at this. You know, when one thinks about life on Earth, uh, uh, life has been on Earth for three and a half billion years, uh, maybe more. The, uh, uh, although intelligent life is probably only uh, been on Earth uh, for a few hundred thousand years. Uh, one of the key questions when you look at the universe is life could be very temporary. Uh, for example, there's a lot of bad things that could happen uh, to life on Earth. Uh, something that, that we do is uh, that although we're supposedly intelligent, uh, we could do something to destroy the environment, uh, unleash uh, uh, nuclear holocaust or other activities, but there's also things the universe can do to us. Uh, one of those things is a, you know, an asteroid could hit. Uh, a nearby star could go supernova and wipe off all the life on Earth, or at least most of it. 
Uh, <clears throat> there's even ultimately a possibility that the universe itself uh, could change its state. Uh, a new uh, universe could emerge uh, and destroy the old one. Uh, there's actually a, a name for this, it's called a death bubble. So there's this whole class of bad things that could happen. Uh, so this really leads us to, to three fundamental, uh, the three fundamental questions of life. Again, is there life elsewhere in the universe? Is there intelligent life elsewhere? And can we travel between stars? Now these are become more fundamental in light of the, the possible temporary nature of, of life on Earth. Uh, so one of our objectives, again, in the breakthrough uh, initiatives is to answer these questions because they may inform us of, of our future and maybe what some of our options may be. Now, let me review a little bit uh, about life on Earth. Uh, life began uh, uh, about three and a half billion years ago, maybe even earlier, uh, the Earth being about four and a half billion years old. Uh, but it's interesting that uh, when life began, it was a very, very simple life. Uh, that are called prokaryotes uh, by the biologists. Uh, these are, and, and if I get this wrong, I apologize. I'm, I'm an astrophysicist, not a biologist. But uh, the, these simple forms of life existed without any really fundamental change for billions of years. Uh, there are two forms of prokaryotes today. There's something called archaea, uh, which interestingly enough, although there's huge quantity of life uh, is archaea. We didn't even know about it until a few decades ago. The second is bacteria. Uh, however, uh, probably somewhere around a billion years ago, uh, give or take a few hundred million years, a, uh, a, a new form of life formed, a much more complicated life form called eukaryotes. Uh, and the, the main difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes is that the eukaryotes uh, uh, were much more complicated, they had a lot more genetic material, uh, but they were able to do a lot more, largely because they were able to use a lot more, uh, a lot more energy. Uh, indeed, all life on Earth is divided into these two main classes of being either a prokaryote or a eukaryote. Uh, the, uh, uh, and furthermore, the prokaryotes are divided into the classes of, of bacteria and archaea. Uh, but when we look at these more complicated cells, much generally larger, not, although not always, uh, that are able to use maybe a thousand times more energy, uh, there's an interesting thing. They actually seem to be a merger or symbiosis of uh, the two simple forms of, of life, the bacteria uh, and the archaea. And what it looks like is that an archaea cell at some point ingested some bacterial cells and this formed a symbiosis. Uh, the interesting thing is that, that, so that all of eukaryotic life, of which we are of course, uh, had, uh, uh, has these more complicated cells. So there's the, 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 the nucleus, the core of the cell has a uh, rather sophisticated uh, genetic coding system uh, involving uh, DNA is the, is, the, is the fundamental storage, uh, information storage unit. But then outside in the cell are other pieces of DNA uh, that, are, that are known as organelles. Uh, these are actually energy producing and they seem to have started out as bacteria. So we are a symbiosis of, of these, two, uh, these two fundamental forms of life. Uh, the, uh, and and they, again, to remind everybody, it is the huge increase in energy usage caused by the ability to separate energy producing functions from the, the core genetic material that, that made this possible. So what do we conclude from this? Well, it, uh, this may have some implications for life in the universe. Uh, the first possibility is that, uh, that any life, the formation of initial life on Earth uh, uh, may have been a singular event. We may be very alone in the universe. There may be little or no life elsewhere in the universe, uh, no life in our solar system outside of us, no life in nearby solar systems, maybe even none in the galaxy. 
Uh, now, this is perhaps a depressing thought, but it's one we need to know. If we do find out we're the only life, then perhaps we have a very unique responsibility to avoid some of these problems that could, could end life on Earth even more than we already do. Now, the second possibility, and this is what I tend to believe might be true, is that life is very common. That, uh, in fact, the fact that life emerged in the first maybe even 500 million years of the Earth's history suggests it may emerge a lot of other places. Uh, however, that this unique event where two forms of, of prokaryotic life or simple life became merged into a, a much more complicated thing could be a very rare possibility. So this is the case we may find single-celled uh, life, uh, the equivalent of bacteria, everywhere. We may find it on Mars, we may find it in the outer solar system, and we may find it uh, on the solar systems around nearby stars. Uh, but intelligence may be extremely rare. Again, we may be the only intelligence uh, uh, in our own galaxy or maybe in many galaxies. So that's a, a second possibility. The third one is that life may be very common. It inevitably uh, evolves into intelligence. Uh, so we would expect to find uh, the universe teeming with intelligence, uh, although uh, that, of course, opens the issue, do we, do we expect, uh, uh, you know, are, are we truly intelligent? So we'll leave that as for a different argument. 